Hello, welcome back. I have two tasks to show today. Um, the first one is that I wanted to do a test assembly of the player one pad, same as I've done with the player two pad that I showed before, and show the entire process. Um, I wanted to make sure all of my pieces fit, uh, since these are completely different pieces. The player two pad is still assembled in the other room. So in theory, these should all be the same dimensions as each other, but I wanted to make sure that was true in practice. Uh, so I finished wrapping all of my other panels, um, and right, I did make a little bit of an unfortunate discovery. Um, the So the first two I mentioned that I wrapped in aluminum by accident. Um, I thought it wasn't really a problem that I had two different metal materials, but I learned uh, after having played a session of In the Groove uh, with the, the player two pad assembled on the floor next to me, a drop of sweat ended up landing on one of the panels that I had wrapped in aluminum, and I didn't notice. Later when I went to wipe it off, uh, I found that it had left quite a mark with a bunch of corrosion there. So apparently salt water, I, I tried with just normal salt water uh, to simulate sweat, um, just to see if it was a fluke, and yeah, that left a mark too. So I might have to rewrap the two of the panels that I did like that, because that is definitely a material that will be getting on them. Or I could just not care and just let them get marked up, rewrap them if they if they end up bothering me. I might do that instead. <laughs> we'll see. So each one of these pieces is labeled. Um, the ones, well, most of them are. I didn't bother writing a label on every one of those little short horizontal pieces because those are easily recognizable. Same for the uh, center verticals, um, since they have the notch cut out. But any of the pieces that are not perfectly distinctive have a have a uh, name written on them. Um, I don't really have a good reference point for the exact vertical al alignment of the horizontal cross pieces. Uh, everything else, since it all packs in tightly and fits together, um, I can, I can just sort of feel where it goes, but with those, um, I don't have, I'm, I'm going to have to measure carefully when I'm ready to fasten them together for real. Uh, they do a good job of spacing out the center pieces, so I know their horizontal position, but I don't know the vertical position of those. At least not without measuring. So, um, this is still being done without any kind of fasteners. Before I actually uh, attach these permanently to the base plate, things that are going to have to happen. Uh, I will need to cut wire channels on the underside of a few of those um, a few of those pieces for wherever the wires go. I have kind of a sort of plan for that, but I haven't really refined it and finalized it. Um, so I'm going to need to do that and figure that out. After I have done that and assembled the thing, um, what I will probably do is spray paint inside all of the arrow wells. I want to make them white so that the eventual LEDs will propagate their light as well as possible. Uh, and I'm spray painting the outer parts red to match what in the Groove 2 pads look like. Uh, their outer parts are all red. So that'll be nice. Just shove everything together, get it all packed in nice and tight. Most of my wood dimensions worked really well. Um, like some of the some of the tools I used were not quite as precise as they could have been. Like when I was cutting all of these two by fours, two by fours, two by threes were cut with a miter saw, uh, which meant I had to just measure, mark, and then eyeball the saw blade on the mark to get it exactly as it needed to be. The table saw was a little more precise, but yeah, miter saw came out just as well as it needed to. I didn't I did not detect any problems um, from imprecision there. So handle joint bracket goes there. Uh, that fit into place nicely. Um, it also sort of keeps stuff together. Uh, note that this is a mirror image of the player two pad. The, the corner cutout is in the lower left. So I'm just kind of eyeballing and guesstimating where those need to go. They'll, they'll be positioned a little more precisely later when I put in the panels. Um, they become a little bit clearer. So risers on the back, both sides. There is a little bit of gap where that corner that I'm adjusting is. Um, I don't think it's going to be a problem. Uh, there's plenty of material to hold everything up. Um, 
There's a small gap on the inside that no one will ever see or know about. It <laughs> won't cause anybody any problems. That piece right there is in two pieces, just like that one, just because the piece of plywood that I bought for that uh, was slightly narrower than that. But it doesn't matter, because those pieces are going to be glued down. They'll just... Um, their purpose is only to elevate things that are on top of them. That still needs to be recut. I uh, haven't gotten any workshop time yet, and I'm not sure when I will be able to again. But it'll happen someday. So the edge finish isn't on yet. This is all narrower than it will be once it is. This goes reasonably quickly. Like, when I know what I'm doing, I didn't have to consult my schematic for this, just because I knew I knew what the pieces were, I knew where they went. Uh, just laying them down kind of tells me where all the others need to go. And yeah, it's fairly enjoyable to do this. Now it's going to be different for the final assembly, but just, just for a test, this is pretty quick and easy. Those risers... Um, they might need to be trimmed down just a tiny bit more, because I notice they, they have a tendency to stick out farther than than I want them to. Um, the particular pattern here doesn't matter. I just need to get them under all four sides of each of the five stationary panels. But yeah, I might need to do a little bit more work on those, because they, they protrude more than they should. And yeah, like I said, I'm just going to glue those down to the um, the pieces that are directly under them. Then I'll drill through all of that and attach the stationary panels from the top. I had that piece at the front in the wrong place. It actually goes all the way at the front. My corners aren't really lining up exactly for those. Um, I think everything from the center back is just a little too far forward. I'm looking at that one to see if it's the wrong size, but replacing it with another still has the same problem. So I just kind of shove stuff backward a little bit because it was it was protruding out of the um, the back cover. So if I get everything all snug up against each other, it fits a lot better. Still doesn't quite look perfect, so again, those might need to be tweaked. But like, I wanted to do this uh, this player one pad assembly to see if there were any major problems, if any of my parts mismatched, and I found no no major problems, other than the stuff that I discovered with the player two pad where I need to recut the back covers. Uh, everything else was pretty good. So these stationary panels, uh, like I said, I got them all wrapped. Um, there aren't any screws in them right now because I need to countersink all those holes. I haven't done that yet. Uh, flathead wood screws are going to go in through those and attach to the bottom part. Um, now, the dimensions I'm working to is 10 and 3 quarters inch per arrow panel. Uh, the stationary panels needed to be just slightly smaller than that to give the arrows some breathing room, just so they wouldn't be, you know, all packed too tightly for the arrows to move up and down freely. I think I might have made them just slightly too small. I did 10.65 inches for them, so basically took off an eighth of an inch um, from the total size. I, they look kind of small, like they're... they're fairly sizable gaps between them and the arrows, a little more than I was predicting. Like, I don't think it's a problem, but if I were doing this again, I think I would get just slightly closer to the same dimensions as the arrows. Edge finish going on. That's not where that piece goes, that's way too short. That goes on the other side. front cover. That front bit doesn't serve any purpose. It's just there to just there to create a little bit of extra space. It serves the purpose of making this look more like the real thing. <laughs> so 
So that's all the edge finish. That piece, of course, still doesn't sit perfectly in there. So the triangle brackets. Um, the risers, again, are protruding and causing problems here. They need to they need to not get in the way of that piece I'm trying to put in now. If they're out just a tiny bit, it's fine, because the triangle bracket holders are in slightly, because the triangle brackets that go on top of them are, um, are slightly wider. Every one of these sensors, this is a sensor that I'm holding now, every one of the sensors was individually wrapped. <laughs> I left this one wrapped just to just to show that, but yeah, I'm, I've discarded most of the other wrappers by now. So I'm bothering to put in the sensors here, even though they don't connect to anything, just because arrows sit on top of them and they're needed to get the appropriate height for, uh, for that. I don't bother with padding for this test assembly, so the arrows were still at the wrong height, but I just wanted to make sure everything fit the other way. A little later in this vid video, you'll see some of the stuff I did to start uh, wiring up the sensors. Because um, each one of them needs a wire harness in the in the arrow well, um, with four connectors to connect those things to. And then that wire harness needs to be wired into the USB interface under one of the uh, upper stationary panels. Um, then also wires for LEDs, those are still kind of a big question mark. <laughs> like, I know I want LEDs in the arrow wells. Uh, I need to connect them to the USB interface. That's about all I know so far. Uh, my brother knows a lot about electronics and LEDs and things. I need to bug him a little more about this. I've asked him for some help. He sent me a bunch of links to things, resistance calculators and confusing stuff that I could not make any sense of. <laughs> Uh, I don't have quite enough of an electronics background to understand LEDs to the to the level that I need to to um, to install them in here. The USB interface that I'm using is called a UHID. Um, it is powered by USB, which is limited to five volts. Uh, the arcade panel lights are 12 volts, so I might not get quite as much power with these as an arcade pad would have. Um, I could potentially use an external power supply for that, and um, yeah, get 12 volts that way or something like that, but that, that complicates things a lot. I'm hoping... I know some people have... So DDR and In The Groove pads use, um, uh, it's not LEDs, it's some other form of lighting. I think In The Groove machines use uh, some sort of, um, yeah, I can't even remember now. But anyway, it's, it's fluorescent or cold cathode tube, something or other. Um, anyway, I've, I've known of a few people who have replaced those in real machines with very bright LEDs, and they're like ridiculously super bright. So I'm hoping that 5 volts of LED will be enough to match uh, the brightness that I need, if 12 volts is like way too much. So normally what would happen here is... Oh, right, those are the, uh, those are the more recently applied decals. They've dried and sort of healed themselves. <laughs> the white spots have magically come out. Still have no idea how that works. It doesn't seem like something that is in the middle of something that's stuck all around would be able to dry, but somehow it does. Uh, right, so normally how this would work is the triangle bracket holders would be uh, screwed into the frame first, then the arrow panel would go in, then the triangle brackets would go on top of that. I have these um, brackets and bracket holders in mated pairs right now because... The machine shop that manufactured them was, um, you know, to be fair, I, uh, uh wait, what am I trying to say here? <laughs> uh, the holes are not all in exactly the same place, so the way the triangle brackets fit onto them, um, I, I had to go through a process of matching them up so that I made sure I had holes that f could, wow. Speaking is hard. <laughs> um, anyway, right. I matched up the holes so the screws would actually go in uh, and just put the screws in partially for the pairs that I knew worked together so that I wouldn't, you know, just 
mix and match, pick and choose until I got down to the last one and suddenly the screw holes just don't line up properly. Because like not all the triangle brackets were exactly the same. Uh, the triangle bracket holders had a fair bit of variance in them. Anyway. <laughs> I'm only bothering to put in the inner ones. Um, there would be twice as many of those. Uh, also on the outside of the arrows, holding them down from those sides. So once I got all of those in, I noticed the alignment was just a little bit weird, like the corners weren't quite meeting each other. I think some of my things were like rotated around or slid around just a little bit because there's just enough play in the stationary panels and arrows and things for that sort of thing to be possible. So I'm going to have to go through a fairly careful process for final assembly to make sure everything's all lined up and that it still all fits together. And that's going to be tricky. So um, I've figured out how I'm going to attach the base plate to the rest of the pad. Um, the idea is going to be that um, I build this whole frame out of wood upside down and stick the base plate on top of it and then just drill down through that in the floor. And that should all work just fine, as long as I can get the frame upside down, which basically is the same thing as right side up. There's no particular difference. It's just like I'm, I'm making the player one pad instead of the player two one or something. <laughs> I'm going to have to mark very carefully so that I know exactly what I'm drilling into and hope that like the little horizontal things don't move around too much or anything. So all this metal finish is going to be glued and also screwed into place. Um... I noticed that on arcade machines, I was able to catch my foot, my shoe on like the corner of some of these metal plates because they're laid out similarly and bend them upward by accident. So I don't want that to happen here. Um, so I'm going to have both of those things in there. And yeah, that's the player one pad. Test assembly, looking pretty good. So switching over now to wiring. Uh, I've already made this thing. I made it uh, on my own just to make sure I understood what was going on. So in each arrow well, there's going to be a harness kind of like this. It's basically a daisy chain of sensor connectors. Um, there are only three here because the fourth one needs to connect into the, um, into the wire that runs to the USB interface and potentially to other arrow panels because there's basically one common wire for all four, uh, and then individual wires for each panel, and then those split four ways for the sensors. So the way I have these chained together is, well, I'll go over all that in the next section. But yeah, so I'm just using a voltmeter here, clipping that together so that I can show this all working. This whole chain boils down to just these two wires here. The black is the common, orange is the color that I've chosen for the player one up arrow, actually uh, both players. So up arrow on either pad is going to be orange wire for that specific thing. Black runs to all of them. Now I could have just cut off the sensor connectors and wired them directly into a system like this so I wouldn't have to deal with the connectors at all. But I didn't want to do that. I wanted to be able to swap the sensors. I wanted to be able to maybe use those in a real machine if necessary, or whatever. Anyway, so yeah, I can press on each one of those, see the resistance go to zero, and it all works. Press on all three of them, it's the same thing. So Harness does a good job. Disconnect, no problem. Though some of the connectors are a little bit stubborn. Voltmeter is a super cool tool. I'm glad I learned to use it. It's very useful for all sorts of things like this. Right, so inside an arrow well, it'd be laid out something like that, where the bare wires are... Oh, right, let me show you. <laughs> so I brought four of those horizontal pieces um, to simulate an arrow well here. Sensors, of course, sit on each one of those, as you've seen many times. This goes in the middle. There is a slight problem with it. I built it a little bit too long. 
I figured more wire would be better than less wire, but I had too much there. Uh, I think each one of those is eight inches. Uh, the next one I build after this that you'll be seeing in a moment uh, was five inches per wire. That was just slightly too short, so I think I'm going to go with six inches for the rest of them. But yeah, you can see like the it just doesn't really want to fit in that space. And if there's going to be LEDs in the middle, then I'll have to navigate around those and their own wires and stuff like that. I don't think it will be a problem. I mean, wires can bend around. They could be stapled down to hold them in place or whatever. But yeah, I just have slightly too much here. And again, that fourth wire connects to the rest of the wiring and will get its connector attached to it once I'm ready to wire it into the entire pad. So that's what that's going to look like. Now, let me show you the process of actually building one of these. So blue is the color I've chosen for the right arrow. Orange and blue just happen to roughly match the, uh, the arrow colors. <laughs> the other's different. So measuring out five inches, uh, the black wire. Then I measure again because I lose track of what I'm doing. Let's try it again. So five inches. Cut that wire. Then, since I have a 5-inch length of wire there, I can use it to measure all the other cuts that I need to make and not bother with the ruler for those. So I need three lengths of black wire here and three lengths of blue wire. There's three black. So done with the black wire for now. That goes out of the way. Ideally, I would use the same, the, the first wire that I measured for measuring all the others, so that if, um, if using a wire to measure a wire errs in any particular direction... What am I doing here? Oh, right, I think I got confused. I, I wasn't... I had a moment where I couldn't figure out if I actually needed three or four wires. Uh, so I stare at it for a moment, go recheck the other harness that I built to, to count the wires in it. But yeah, verify that I had done that right. Yeah, so ideally I would have kept track of which wire I had originally measured on the ruler. Just because if I'm using a wire to measure a wire, um, whichever way my error for cutting goes, I wouldn't want that error to keep propagating. Like if I, if I cut a little longer uh, when holding two wires together, I wouldn't want to take the slightly longer one and cut a slightly longer one with that. I would just want to let the same error happen once each time, rather than to build up, if that makes sense. <laughs> but I didn't keep that close track of it. It worked out fine. So three blue wires, three black wires. Each one of those needs to have its insulation stripped off at the end. I'm just eyeballing this. Um, I'm doing about half an inch or so, maybe. That is a great tool for stripping those things. Has slots for all sorts of different wire gauges. This happens to be a 22 gauge uh, stranded wire. Um, I didn't have a whole lot of that on hand. Uh, I ordered some more from Amazon. I was trying to figure out where I could go locally to buy more of it on a Sunday afternoon, but I could not find any place. There is no electronics store in my town since Radio Shack closed, and I'm very unhappy about it. <laughs> so that can be quite inconvenient sometimes. I mean, you can, I can order just about whatever I need online, but that's very non-immediate. So I just have to plan ahead carefully, and if I, if I need something in a hurry, then tough. I'm going to have to wait two days for Amazon to ship it to me. Sometimes those are a bit stubborn, and it can be easier to just, once it's started, pull it, pull it, pull it the rest of the way off with my fingers. All right, blue's all stripped. Now black. This was a very long process, so I'm glad I can edit it down and show you just the interesting bits. Because 
a lot of this was just frustratingly long and I'm gonna have to do this so I end up with two wire harnesses for this which have three connectors each I'm gonna have to do this process six more times and then attach eight more connectors uh, once I'm wiring the whole pad and then go through another similar thing for the LEDs once I'm ready for those and for the pad interconnect um, that one won't be so bad that's just a just a one-off so right here, I wanted to zoom in to show, um, uh, right, sorry, I got, I got a little behind what's happening here. Um, so with the stripped wires, um, I need to crimp them onto these pins that go into the housings uh, that connect to the sensor connectors. Um, these are kind of complicated little bits of tin that have... Uh, small tabs there that I'm working at with the needle nose pliers um, and slightly larger tabs right behind them that also need to be wrapped around. The idea is that the small tabs there are supposed to wrap around the bare wire and the larger ones are supposed to wrap around the insulated wire. This is a terrible tool to use for the job. Like it can work um, but there are specialized crimping tools for specifically for this. I happened not to have one when I was sitting down to do this so I decided to just do it with needle nose pliers which you know, it's possible, but it's terrible. This was super unpleasant, so I've ordered a crimping tool that I can use for this next time. That will make this much nicer, because basically I should be able to just line the wire up, insert it into a little slot, squeeze, and be done, rather than all this work to try to sort of twist these tiny little tiny pins around just the right way, wrap them around the wire, get it all tight enough so that the thing doesn't come out if I pull on it, uh, right, that little tab just sort of tears off. And I'm done, right? Got that all crimped on, right? Give it a test pull, and that happens. <laughs> so I throw away that pin, cut a new one, do the same thing again, and actually get it right this time so that it crimps on better. I had a screwdriver with me that I could use to sort of push the wire into the slot because it tended to want to kind of come out before I had crimped it down with the with the pliers. Uh, so that was a handy tool, but it just didn't really want to stay. All right, got that one nice and tight. Pull on it, feels pretty stable. Now the other pins or tabs or whatever you want to call them all crimped down, mostly. All right, that one's done. Tab comes off. So now I have a wire crimped to a pin. The pin goes into the connector housing, which I have over there somewhere. So give it a good pull, very stable, not coming off. So connector housing here. Uh, I had a little bit of trouble keeping this all in shot. <laughs> so look at the top of the screen, I guess. Oh, there we go. Uh, those have a particular orientation where they go in. Just push them in a certain way. If I've crimped it properly, it should fit. There's a quiet little click there that's audible. Uh, that means it's gone all the way in and is anchored into place. So there's one pin in that connector now. So now a blue wire gets placed into a pin, crimp, housing thing, whatever, <laughs> and goes into the connector housing. Didn't hit a click, pulled, and it just came right back out, so I needed to work on the crimp a little more. It wasn't quite fitting in place. Because those larger posts that I have to wrap around the, the uninsulated wire um, do not fit into the housing normally if they're not if they're not already crimped. Or if they're crimped poorly. There was a click. Alright, so those are firmly attached now. So I have two pins connected to wires in the housing. Now Right, so those connect up to the sensor just fine. And everything's cool. So 
So now those two bare wires uh, get chained onto another one of these connectors. So this is a little different. Um, I'm twisting two wires together, and those are both going to go into the crimp pin. They're a little bit large for doing that, like they kind of just barely fit. Um, those pins are made for, well, made for a certain size of thing, and this is like at the top end or slightly above that, that size, but I made them all fit the way they needed to. So a little harder to seat everything in there. It's also really hard to see what's going on here. Like this is, these are some very tiny little components. I will say, this was a lot less frustrating than soldering. <laughs> soldering is just like the worst thing. This is the second worst thing. <laughs> I am cutting out a lot of trial and error and messing up and redoing and recrimping and working and working and working with the needle nose pliers. Um, yeah, trying, had to work a fair bit to get the wire seated in place with the screwdriver there. But yeah, crimp's a little different because it's thicker. And that one's crimped in place. Inserts just fine, assuming I've done my crimp the right way. So the purpose of all this is basically to, to bridge the wires without having to use some other um, some other sort of um, tool for that. Uh, I have, I guess I didn't crimp that well enough. Um, I have other tools that could do the job for splicing wires, but just splicing them directly in the connector seemed like the best solution for this particular situation. So that's what I did. I think I got a click. I must have got a click because it looks like it's connected. Cool. Then black wire, twist another one on there, cut another pin, put the wire in the pin, crimp everything down, insert, And that's two. So number three, same thing. I think this is blue here. Click. Black. Click. And there we go. That's three connectors in a chain with two bare wires waiting for a fourth connector and connected to the rest of the system. So just to verify that this all works, plug in three sensors, connect a voltmeter, <laughs> clothespins were the best tool I had for this. They, they worked, they were a little awkward, but they did, did the job eventually. Push, works, push, works fine, push, works fine, cool. So that's the wire harness. Um, so I've kind of hit my limit on the amount of time and energy I can spend on this project right now. So things might slow down for just a little bit. I also need some workshop time to fix up those um, those wooden back cover pieces. And that hasn't, uh, hasn't happened yet, and I'm not sure exactly when it will. So uh, I'm not going to push myself to get like half an hour of new stuff uh, each each time this time slot comes up. Uh, so these videos might become a little bit sporadic from here on because the last few were working through footage. <laughs> Sorry for the black screen at the end here. I didn't have anything pre prepared for that. <laughs> uh, so I, um, I worked through all the footage I had already taken and what you saw today was all new stuff. So it's going to take some time to um, to be able to put the effort into this project and... Um, yeah, what am I trying to say? You know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> anyway, I'll keep the camera rolling for when I am able to spend some time on this and put together uh, more of these videos uh, whenever I have the chance, but it's probably not going to be every two days for at least the last little bit of this. Anyway, I'll see you next time, sometime. <laughs>